Uh, Tewksbury, 1992. Tewksbury. That's cool. That's a cool name. Um, yes. How much capital does it take to start a brick and mortar? Would you recommend it or starting out online first? Um, I don't know how I'm going to edit this. Well, I answered that in another question. Um, but I'll say real quick. Uh, definitely start online first. That's the only way that you're going to know if you're going to like it. Um, again, give you an idea of, of kind of the margins that you can expect and then the uh, experiences of buying, selling, shipping, um, that kind of product stuff. Um, I recommend anybody doing online first and getting a feel for it, getting an idea of what all is involved and what it takes and what kind of situation you're going to be running into that just get exaggerated 10 times if you have a, a physical storefront. So start out there first, always. Um, how much capital? Um, again, depends on how big and how uh, awesome of a store you want right off the get-go. Uh, like I said, uh, I mean, Zach, uh, we started off with basically nothing, worked our way up, and, you know, uh, since then have, you know, kind of just been, every time we've been able to improve our location or get a better location or, you know, uh, whatever, we've been hopping around. Uh, this is the third retail store that we've actually been in. We went from 700 square feet to 2,300 square feet. Now we're operating out of uh, 7,500 square feet and looking into uh, getting warehouse space now. So that's just uh, the growth of our business and how we've done that. So um, obviously, if we had to go and jump right into this space, uh, it would have been impossible. Uh, it would have taken probably, um, <laughs> like from like nothing start, by the time you're looking at product inventory, all that kind of stuff, uh, probably no less than $120,000. Um, I'd probably say something close to a quarter of a million dollars would be like peachy. So you're good for, you know, uh, till you get and start your money rolling. Um, depending on where you're at, um, rent alone is going to probably eat you alive <laughs> if you don't um, have huge uh, turnover and huge followings and kind of build that, uh, you know, uh, customer base over a, a quick <laughs> amount of time. You'd, you'd you'd be choked to death by debt and not being able to make overhead. So uh, yeah, quarter of a million dollars would be like, if you want to be like, yeah, I want to open up an, a great store just right off the rip um, and have inventory and everything like that. Um, that's where I would recommend. If you want to do like a littler, 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 littler <laughs> a littler store and do like, you know, maybe something closer to like 1,500 to 2,000 square feet, um, that way you're only looking at probably, depends on where you're at again, but uh, like $150,000 for rent potentially maybe, uh, you know, for the first year. Um, you could probably get away with starting off with maybe 60000 or, uh, you know, <laughs> again, you got to buy uh, the equipment, the lighting. Uh, a lot of places require you to have channel lettering and uh, different things to the outside of your store. And that's those, that alone is like $10,000 um, if you want it all done right and proper. Uh, yeah, it, it you think I got enough and then it, it quickly goes away. Again, if you want to think about all the things that go into opening a brick and mortar, watch uh, Darium's, Darium MTG's, uh, ask a shop owner, watch Rudy's opening a store uh, series. All this stuff is, is, is illustrated very clearly and and they'll spend more time uh, talking about the specifics than uh you know i can do in just a quick q a video so go watch them they have good stuff from willis the don hey willis uh i guess you're local so um awesome uh question that he says uh, my question can really be its own video and yeah it could be it might be we'll see how long this goes um what are the requirements to open up a card and game store so, here we go. Uh, again, I don't know how I'm gonna edit this, so I'm gonna probably repeat myself, so just, it's okay. So, opening a store, you have to have, first, a place that you're going into. So again, um, I would not recommend having any sort of storefront less than 1,500 square feet. 
uh, probably something closer to 3,000 square feet if you want like a good size with a lot of good amount of product is all the better if you're gonna do stuff like uh, all kinds of gaming stuff like uh, tabletop board games that kind of stuff um, the more space the better for that um, probably you'd be pushing probably 4,000 square feet um, I would not recommend doing any more than that um, just our retail front without the play space out there is 2,300 square feet uh, and that has tabletop stuff and it's 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 pretty cramped but it's, it's a comfortable cramped where I like the feel of it when you walk in and that it's I think it's just is fun to look at without it being like oh my god there's so much stuff in here or you know being so far apart because our store used to be the full length of our our building which was a retail square footage at our biggest time was probably 6,500 square feet. That's a, that's a big old store. That's a big old store with play space for about 120 to well, 120 comfortably. Uh, that amount of space is, is, is I think unnecessary um, unless you want to go crazy. But yeah, um, you could go that big and 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 so it kind of depends on your scale um like i said i would start no less than 1500 square feet um and again if you want to do other kind of stuff in there uh, bigger uh so you got that that's your requirements um remember you got to do utilities um you gotta have insurance insurance uh most places uh distribution and uh certain uh contractual agreements you have with some organized place like um Pokemon Wizards of the Coast required you have some sort of insurance. Insurance uh, with, I think, uh, we have a half a million dollar policy. Uh, plus insurance on the st stuff that you own, which I think we are up to um, like half a million dollars on that. So that's expensive and you have to maintain that. And um, the place you lease from is going to require you to maintain that. Um, as far as other things that you got to have, you got to have... Obviously, tables and chairs. You're looking at probably uh, five grand on that, depending on, again how much, how big you want. You're looking at display cases, um, just retail racks, which can be <laughs> silly expensive. Um, uh, glass display cases. I would definitely splurge and get the ones with with lighting in it because small stuff like trading cards. You want to have a nice, good shine to them and make sure that they're well illuminated so people can read them, see what they are. You got to have that. Um, I'd spend no less than two grand on that and the rest of the retail spots and things like slat wall and uh, pegboard if you want to do pegboard wire racks uh, other shelving rooms and other things like that on the floor you're gonna have probably another uh, five to ten thousand dollars if you wanted to get the nicer stuff on that again you got to do channel lettering on the outside of the building uh, most places require that you have channel lettering i think uh wizard of the coast also requires you to have some sort of signage on the front saying that you're a game store uh, you have to have that. That's ten thousand uh, dollars. If you want to do vinyl or any sort of other advertisement stuff on the windows, um, we recently spent um, two grand on that. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, product itself, um, I wouldn't have any other. I wouldn't have less than fifty thousand uh, dollars in product. Uh, even if you wanted to be a small store, that's with singles and. Uh, you know, sealed product. Um, I think we probably have closer to a hundred thousand uh, dollars. That's just a rough estimate. Uh, you got to have that kind of stuff. But even if you are small, you want to have enough product to keep people interested, seeing that you are serious and that you have good maintenance of that product, and you can get it at a regular interval. If you have something once and then never restock it, uh, people can see through that, and they're like, "Okay, this guy's." just a joke he was just you know starting off and trying to get us in here and then now he's being cheap about it um so yeah you got to keep up on main on maintenance and that kind of stuff of a product because if people don't have what you, if they if you don't have what they want when they come in they just stop coming they just stop showing up so yeah you got to maintain all that stuff you got to have enough good cash flow and enough reserve cash to keep buying things until the money keeps rolling in so the, you got to have uh, you know a lot of stores um, and this is why a third of them went under during the pandemic they don't have reserve funds um, for a long time we didn't have reserve funds and that's just uh, 
kind of the the buy sell trade business and you kind of just are month to month sometimes uh, whether or not you are making money or you know not closing you know there's a lot of times in our businesses lifespan early on that cool we made another month this is great let's keep going <laughs> it, it's like that it can be so um, I if you want to prepare for that um, three months in expenses for some sort of cash reserve or a safety net uh, I would say you got to have that uh, to be in a good spot uh, but yeah um, as far as other requirements, um, like I said, organized play requires uh, certain things uh, and restrictions on things. Um, like with Pokemon, you can't have uh, any sort of sexual products or uh, even like uh, things like uh, like knives and swords and stuff like that. Um, I think there's uh, a passage of stuff on that. It's by a case by case basis. I think um, even uh, being a game store, like a video game store. We have mature games. We have to. I, I made clarified and, and made sure with Pokemon that that's all good to go. Um, if you have any sort of play space, you have to have a bathroom. That's it's pretty much required. Um, I've seen stores, and we even thought about doing it for a little while without having a public bathroom. But realistically, that is a definite requirement. You just you gotta have a restroom if you're gonna have people in your store for two, three, four, all day. <laughs> it just has to happen. Um, other, other, other sort of requirements, I mean, you're looking at if you want to do like vending, stuff like food and snacks, uh, just to keep people um, happy and content while they're playing. Um, you gotta have um, either a cooler or some sort of vending machines. Uh, those can be thousands of dollars um, or a thousand dollars a piece. Uh, you can also lease machines, but uh, that's expensive. You're just better off buying stuff outright if you can. Uh, especially with vending machines. If it's, it's, vending machines are, are nice. That they don't take up employee in your time. Just you have to restock them. But uh, like I said, the, just the, the initial cost of those are expensive. Um, but a lot of places just have snacks and things that they sell out at the register, and that's 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 fine too. And uh, other requirements. I mean, you got to have uh, <laughs> you got to be knowledgeable. You got to have uh, people that have experience with what you're selling. You can't just be. Uh, yeah, I sell uh, magic and I don't know anything about it, but uh, here you go. Here's all my singles. <laughs> you got to have people that can explain, to introduce people to, to card games. You got to have uh, knowledge about what you're selling or else you become discredited and you're just like, okay, I don't know anything about this game, but I'm going to just sell stuff about it. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, people, the longevity of your community will not be there if you don't have the knowledge base built up and or hire somebody that does. Um, so, like, uh, we have a big Vanguard following. Um, Austin is our TCG manager, and he is an expert at Vanguard. Keeps up with that stuff. Very knowledgeable about the game. Um, has experience in playing higher-end events as well. So, that's absolutely required. You have to have somebody that is knowledgeable if you want to be taken serious. Um, other requirements. Let me see. Um, I mean, you got to have equipment. you got to have a point-of-sale system. you got to have some sort of credit card processing machines. Um, those are all expensive. Um, for convention and things, we use like little handheld card readers, which work on like a like a cell phone network, which is nice because some places don't have Wi-Fi access, or it's extra like, more expensive. Um, those uh, can be little little card processing machines, seven hundred dollars a piece. Um, yeah, but they're even like regular card processors. You can get them through your bank, and whoever you're getting your bank th or banking through. Sometimes they'll lease you machines and, um, you know, you'll pay for them through the percentage, the higher percentage, but that's, you know, a cost of convenience. Um, like I said, you got to have some sort of operating system that you're running off of to sell your items through. Um, Square is pretty popular. Uh, if you have an online store, Shopify, I would say, is probably the best. And uh, Shopify also has a POS that is built in if you want to do in-store purchases as well through them. So, um Shopify, I think, is the best and easiest thing to do an online part of uh, business. Uh, but yeah, some sort of point of sale that is <laughs> scanning barcodes and making that a more efficient process for you is absolutely a requirement. Um, pricing things manually with price stickers, you can get away with that for a little while, but at some point it becomes not worth your time to go through all that effort of either having to look up prices or just stickering everything. It, it becomes not economical to do that so 
you absolutely have to have stuff and equipment in place to do that. Um, I no longer think it's viable to own just a brick and mortar store that is local only. So we got to do some sort of online business. So you have to have a TCG player account. TCG player is absolutely essential if you're selling cards online, I think. Um, yeah, you can do eBay and eBay has taken up and uh, improved in card sales, but TCG player does such a great job. Um, it's all integrated. They have the traffic, which is huge, uh, that allows you to sell things quickly as long as you are competitive on price. Um, a TCG player account is absolutely necessary, which means you have to have the setup that sells all those things. You got to have uh, shipping materials. You got to have the printer. You got to have uh, a label printer for shipping labels. You gotta, that's absolutely essential. You got to have that. Um, and that's just if you even just want to do online only. All that stuff is uh, absolutely essential. Yeah, we we have written our our <laughs> return address on envelopes, and we have at one point uh, you know had a little stamp that stamped everything. Um, you can also use stamps.com and it does it all for you automatically. It prints it out. You can even load up your printer with uh, envelopes and it does it all for you very quickly and easily. So, um, you know, you learn along the way to do that stuff and or to get to a point where you can afford that stuff. So, uh, yeah, all that's cool. And uh, other sort of requirements. Let me see. Other things people think about. Uh, things that even like... Um, you know, maintenance to your storefront you gotta buy uh, take care of maintain stuff you gotta paint have paint and you know things spill you gotta have a carpet cleaner to clean the carpets you gotta, if you have carpets or uh, if you have some sort of hardwood or uh, hard surface flooring uh, materials to clean all that stuff uh, which I, I'm shocked and stunned that some stores just don't think or want to bother to do that it blows my mind um, even things like um, you know, uh, like uh, drop-in ceiling tiles, that kind of stuff. You gotta have that kind of stuff because those get damaged and bent up, and uh, water damage and stuff like that can happen to them. Uh, it's, there's, there's a lot. There's <laughs> maintenance. Maintenance alone is its own expense, and just uh, improvements stuff is uh, takes up a lot of your time and money. <laughs> you have to have somebody other than yourself to do any sort of physical in-store. I don't care who you are. I don't care how badass you think you are or that you can do it all yourself you absolutely cannot you cannot answer emails you know answer phone calls answer emails at tcg player ship orders shipping orders is a full-time position if you are doing um, you know enough business with that and then to turn around and think you're going to wait on customers and have all that no you have to have somebody to man registers you got to have uh, retail people out there that can answer questions um, be attentive to customers, um, responding to emails and, and stuff, uh, somebody on the back end that does all that kind of stuff. If you're running events, you gotta have somebody that can manage and run those events and do things like pairings and stuff. It's, you can't do it yourself, by yourself. It's, it, it's not possible. Uh, even if you wanna do it, just your small family, have a small shop, uh, okay. Like, but. Uh, you're just gonna be very hard on yourself. You're gonna do a lot of manual work yourself, and it's you'll quickly burn yourself out trying to do it all yourself. So you have to have a bare minimum, uh, you know, employees to run the registers for you. It's just it's, you have to. You have to have somebody out there that does that kind of stuff because if you don't, uh, you're gonna burn yourself out, and you're gonna hate hate running the store because it's gonna be too much. That's it. That's all I got. Hopefully that helps some things to think about.